Hey, this is Clint from CT Mad Mods, and this week I'm finally putting that fuel tank in. I got that fuel tank from Zooks Off-Road. 15 gallon tank with an internal fuel pump. Let's go. Been waiting for this one. I was just driving down the highway on the way over here and uh, it started sputtering. Bah, bah, bah. I was running out of gas. So kicked it down in second gear and let it coast and uh, pulled right into the spot and it died. So I think I timed it perfect. Now that she's out of gas, let's pull that tank. I've pulled a few of these tanks. You basically have four bolts and you got this hose right here and you've got all of your connections for your fuel lines to the engine so we're going to start disconnecting this junk so i just disconnected this hose right here and i pulled the four bolts now the fuel tank's down and i'm gonna lower this down a little bit and see if i can get all of the hoses disconnected from the top all right in mind whenever i put the fuel line going up to the front I knew that I was going to be putting a 15 gallon tank in this one day, so I made this hose long enough to fit on top of the tank. So I'm going to need this hose and I'm going to need a return. And there's two vent hoses. Let's look at what's going on over here. It looks like I have a return line and a fuel line and then two vent lines. And Myron sent me a brand new filler neck. So it looks pretty simple. There's really no instructions. It's kind of self-explanatory. You know, this side goes where the filler is. And uh, then we just need to make these connections right here. And you got yourself a ground wire and a power wire. Nothing to it. Let me get you guys up to speed. This is my return. So I put a red piece of tape on it, not that I really need it, because this other hose right here is my main line going up to the, to the engine. That's my return. And you have two vents right there, and you've got your big hose right there. Uh, mine has this little red and yellow wire. It had a plug on it. It was plugged in right back there. I'm assuming that's a descending unit, but it must go to that right there. I'm just guessing here. Yep. It's a plug. Give me some sort of dielectric grease and put it on there and that's going to go in there. Right now is the time to police up any kind of wires or anything that I had all kinds of junk in here. Like uh, I'm gonna zip tie that down. Um, that goes to LED lights. So zip tie that down and uh, basically do any kind of cleanup that you gotta do. Kind of clean up under here. There's a whole bunch of junk I need to get rid of over there, but I can do that later. And uh, let me get this squared away. All right, so we're going in with this thing and you're gonna wanna make sure you hook this up. Uh, you have two vent lines that go up by the filler hose. The filler hose goes on there. And then you have the two lines, the feed and the return, and you got a couple of electrical lines. I'm just pushing those out of the way because they're pretty long. So I'll be able, to, um, be able to hook those up. But I need to get this up in there like at an angle so I can hook it onto those two lines that are hanging out right there. All right, I'm sorry about the lighting in here, but um, you can see that I have my main and my, my feed and my return. Um, 
I'm gonna do away with the old filter and I've got this metal filter right here. This is what I'm gonna use. So I think all I'm gonna do for now is get a hose clamp, like a really big one to fit around this and then mount it on this frame rail somewhere with a big hose clamp. So I think that's the business. Everything's going together. All the bolts fit right up and I'm just uh, putting them all in right now. Let's go. So this is the only bolt that's kind of hard to get to. I just have a ratcheting wrench inside there and I'm getting that one in there. All the rest of them are pretty easy. Um, you can just use an impact to get right to them. So I like this new skid plate. It looks cool. My other one was a little getting a little rusted out. I had rust coming off. It looks like it clears my bumper. Looks good. All right, I got a handful of zip ties. You know what time it is. We about to do this. I just zip tied my uh, fuel filter up there out of the way. I'm gonna have to come up with a better solution than that, but that'll work for now. And then um, I'm gonna get all, I'm gonna get all these wires here. You need to put a ground, so I went to body and then body to frame, um, and your power your power line. So this is the power wire that I had for that fuel pump that was in here, and uh, I just soldered it and uh, shrink heat shrinked it uh, to the little connector. Put some dielectric grease in that connector. And oh, looks like I forgot a ground, so I'll throw that ground up there too. I just got to looking at this other little ground. I had this ground for my other fuel pump, and so I was like, I'm gonna go ahead and ground the body to the frame, but uh, it looks like that's what that is, so it's another ground. I'm just gonna throw it in, why not? got about a half a gallon all right now i see if this sucker starts up um i got a push button in mine so we're gonna do that oh started right up it's only got a gallon of gas in it but right off the bat i cannot hear that fuel pump <laughs> that's awesome all right we're gonna run down the road see if i can make it to the gas station I got about a gallon and a half in it and uh, hopefully we don't break down. I told Rizzo to watch out for me. If I break down, he'll come get me. I can already tell a big difference. It's not super loud anymore. All I can hear is the engine running, but there's a gas station about a half a block away. I'm gonna see if I can run over there and make it. And uh, I'm only gonna put a few gallons of gas in this thing because I don't know if I have a good seal on the, the fill tube but I guess we're about to find out together. <laughs> Put five gallons in it. I'm literally in rush hour traffic, <laughs> waiting to get to the gas station. It's only a half a block away. And uh, these Samurais with the uh, 1.6 liter 16 valves, they do, once, if they're not warmed up, they'll do like this little surgeon thing and it feels like you're uh, running out of fuel. <laughs> it just did that to me. All right, we're finally moving. Let's see if I can make it to a gas pump. Put a couple of gallons in this sucker and see if that hose leaks any. All right, doesn't look like it's leaking. Only gonna put a couple of gallons in it. Gas is expensive. Thanks, Biden. All right, just stuck another 11 gallons in it. No leaks. All right, my uh, gas gauge works now. Okay, I went out and tested it. 
and uh, I had all this zip tied up just in case I needed to change something or fix something. Um, I'm not gonna leave this like this. I went over to the local fab shop, GTF, Green Tree Fabrication, and got to looking around, and they had this little bracket. I'm gonna tack weld that on there for that um, fuel filter, and just use a big old hose clamp to hold it on. So, got me a coffee from uh, Brood Awakenings. We're about to do this. Yeah, and of course, you know I got some help today. He always shows up whenever all the hard work's done. The reason why I do stuff like this, uh, where I just kind of like use a bunch of zip ties and throw it together and don't mount it properly is because this isn't my shop. Um, this is Kevin's shop. This is a working automotive tire center. And uh, I can get the lift for an hour or two and I can't leave it overnight really. So I hodgepodge things together just to get it going so I can test on it. And then I'll come back the next day and complete it. So that's what I'm doing today. Uh, I've already installed this thing, uh, everything except for mounting this fuel filter. But I think I have a solution for it. Uh, they got a welder here, so I'll be able to tack weld that little bracket to where that's sitting. And uh, then I'll be able to cut the hoses to length and everything. Um, so I just cut all those zip ties and I'm gonna pull this apart, tack weld that little bracket in there. And then we're gonna wrap this sucker up Okay, so I just took a hammer. This is a, for a two and a half inch radius. This is like a three inch. So I just smacked it a couple of times and made sure that that fit on there. And uh, whoa, still got gas in it. <laughs> I'm gonna put like some rubber on this. So I'll figure that out. And then uh, we're gonna slap her in. Okay, I welded that little bracket on there. I'm gonna slip uh, three inch uh, hose clamp around it, put some rubber on it, and then I'm gonna cut these hoses to length. Um, a little sketchy welding around all that gas because uh, whenever I disconnected that, that gas uh, fuel filter, <laughs> fuel went everywhere, it was nasty. You can see it all over the floor. Just dried it up with an air compressor and we're about to mount this fuel filter. All right, so I shortened up my fuel hoses I welded that little bracket on there, put a hose clamp on it and some rubber pieces from a door seal. And uh, that's solid. That thing ain't going nowhere. So I'm gonna reroute my ground wires on the backside of all that, and then kind of police up all this wiring and everything and zip tie it all together and uh, make sure nothing's rubbing. And we're gonna call that done. Came out pretty good. Okay, so I just put a bunch of zip ties all over everything, secured everything down, got my ground wire moved out of the way, and uh, all my wiring's pleased up. So that's pretty much a done deal. That ain't going nowhere. Race coming right along. I'm just about done building this thing. What am I gonna do after this? <laughs> Need a couple more rigs. That filter that I used is a Wix 33296. So if you were wondering what that was, it's just a, uh, high pressure fuel filter. Um, I just went to the auto parts store and looked for the biggest doggone one I could find that was in line. So that's all that was. And I just used some hose clamps and put that together. Let's uh, start this thing up and make sure it's not leaking. All right, no leaks. <laughs> She's ready to go. Got 15 gallons now. This thing gets horrible gas mileage. I make like nine miles to the gallon. I literally run out of gas in about a hundred miles if I start it and let it run a bit um, with the 10 gallon tank. So 15 gallons, I'll be able to make it 150 miles now. <laughs> if you want one of these 15 gallon fuel tanks, get with uh, Myron over at Zooks Off-Road and uh, he sells these things all the time. I just want to thank Myron for sending this out to me. Man, what an awesome little tank. Super simple install, it went right together didn't even come with directions because you don't need them. If you're not subscribed to Myron's YouTube channel, it's Zooks Off-Road, go subscribe. He's got a lot of great content over there. If you own a Suzuki, you'll want to check him out. And just like anything else, you need to support the guys who are supporting the community. Quit buying from China. It's not racist, that's where it came from. Won't be needing this no more. 